Hello and welcome to the Chickadee Knitting Club podcast. My name is Caitlin and I almost didn't make this video today. It was just one of those Saturday mornings that I had planned to be really productive, do a lot of stuff, um, but that didn't quite work out. I was just really tired and decided to check in with myself um, and take it easy this morning. But all of a sudden, um, this afternoon, I'm kind of getting a second wind, and I'm really glad that, I, um, that I'm feeling up to uh, filming something because not only uh, did I actually plan to make something today, so it feels um, quite satisfying to check that off my to-do list, but also because I um, picked this outfit out specially to have in my podcast. I'm wearing the um, the thrifted turtleneck that I wore in the last uh, video. I've essentially just been living in this turtleneck. It's one of my favorites. The earrings are also thrifted. They are little lilies of the valley, I believe. This sweatshirt is uh, from Harvard from when my sister and I took a train to Boston over spring break um, and just explored the city and got to spend some time at Harvard. And I knew that I wanted to get a sweatshirt for the sake of getting to say that we went to Harvard. <laughs> but my favorite part of this outfit is the socks. And I'm gonna show them to you. Um, so from the bottom, they seem fairly uh, unassuming, just your regular standard socks. Or are they? Because they also have um, an alpaca drinking a nice, cozy, warm little drink there. Um, it was, this was a birthday present from one of my cousins, and I wear them all the time. It's really fun to wear them at work, even though no one can see the alpacas underneath my scrubs. Um, but I know they're there, and it brings me a little bit of joy in my day. My fieldwork rotation is going very well. The last time I had filmed, I had finished up about two weeks of my rotation, and now I only have two weeks left, which is so wild to me. Everyone told me that time would fly. I even told myself, like, all right, you know, this is just gonna zip on by. Um, but now that it's almost gone, I can hardly believe it. I've had such a wonderful time at my placement. I really love the pace of occupational therapy in a hospital. I love um, getting to know people, getting to know our patients, and um, even the folks that only come in for a day or two, or the folks that are there for months on end. It's really fun to get to know them, get to know uh, who they are, what they enjoy doing, um, what's meaningful to them, and being able to incorporate that in their healing process, um, wherever they are on that journey. I also love getting to be creative and think on my feet every single day, and how occupational therapy doesn't just address the nuts and bolts of uh, what helps people do what they do, but it really focuses on the whole person. And I really love that. I really love doing what I do. When I first moved into this little tiny town, I joined the prayer shawl ministry at a church just down the street from me. And it was the perfect timing because in a matter of weeks, they were holding their sort of annual um, shawl dedication service. And so I had the chance to um, get some yarn from the ministry there um, and whip up a prayer shawl as fast as I could. And they were so generous to offer to give me free yarn so that I could make a shawl to contribute to their ministry. And it really was um, about two and a half weeks of just furious knitting. It was one of those projects where if I was sitting, I was knitting, which was really fun because I would bring uh, my project in to work with me to do over my lunch break. And it started a lot of wonderful conversations, including teaching my coworkers what yarn bombing is, which was really fun to watch them discover that for the first time. I don't have the finished product with me because like I mentioned, um, I donated it to the ministry um, just in time for their shawl dedication service. And there's a good chance that it already is en route to uh, someone who could use a little bit of encouragement and some warmth. 
but I did take a video of it. And let me tell you, when I first saw the height comparison, it kind of blew me away. The yarn is Puzzle Bulky Yarn by Premier Yarns in the color Jigsaw. And the pattern I used was the Feather and Fan Shawl pattern by Lion Brand Yarn. And even after that gigantic shawl that I just showed you, I still have yarn left over. That's just how much yarn the church gave me. So I'm putting it to good use by knitting um, just a simple scarf with it. Um, you know, garter stitch, classic big long rectangle. And what I hope to do with this, um, as the weather gets colder here, um, I hope to have it done before I move out in December. And um, I plan on either tying it around a tree or putting it on a park bench um, and including a little note attached to the scarf um, that says something along the lines of, I'm not lost if you are in need of warm winter clothes, please take me with you. Just as a way to do some good with um, the yarn that was gifted to me and also to support the people who are, you know, who will keep living here after I've left. My other finished project is also one that I don't have with me because it is the uh, baby leggings that I was knitting in the previous episode that I gave to my coworker just in time before she heads out on maternity leave, as well as a pair of fingerless mitts, um, kind of to have a little uh, mommy and me set. And I had just enough yarn and just enough time to do it all, um, and it ended up looking really, really cute. But now I've got a little ball um, of the yarn that I used for that project, and it's not really enough to make like a whole garment, and so I'm tucking it to the side um, with my other scrap yarn, and hopefully in the coming new year, um, or some year after that, I will um, put it to some good use in a little uh, scrap yarn project of sorts. The work in progress that is currently occupying most of my knitting time is a pair of fingerless mitts for myself. I've been meaning to make myself some, you know, driving mitts to keep in my car when the mornings are really chilly. And after searching through patterns forever, it felt like I finally found the perfect one. It's called The Last Day's Mittens by Paula Drollard of Autumn Poppy Designs. I I'm using the um, DK alpaca yarn from the alpaca farm that I visited with my family earlier this autumn, and so far they've been so fun to knit. I've got um, a little sort of like test knit, I call it my test mitt, just to kind of see um, what the pattern itself looks like if I followed all the instructions, so then I could know what to adjust to suit it to my personal taste. I've already completed one of them, the right hand mitt, and it looks a little something like this. Um, haven't woven in the ends yet, um, don't know when I will. I might drive off into the sunrise um, with uh, the loose ends just flowing free <laughs> until I finally get around to it. Um, but uh, I really didn't change all that much um, besides uh, the border that I cast on and cast off with, um, just because I wanted to give it a little more of a rustic feel since I knew that this yarn um, was going to give it a pretty rustic look, so I wanted to lean into that. The lace pattern is this lovely um, kind of braided uh, design. And all I really did was add a 2x2 two two rib um, on the top, the thumb, and at the cuff. I just started the thumb gusset for the left hand mitten, and I'm just so happy to be using the little alpaca stitch markers that um, we got from the alpaca farm. And so far, these little mittens have just been a joy to knit. Which I, which I really, really love because then as I um, continue to wear them into the winter, um, they'll just carry that joy along with them. But unfortunately, um, this joyful little project comes at the expense of 
my botanical lace wrap. I have not really touched it. I think I, I think I added about an inch since the last time I picked this up, um, which was almost a month ago. And unfortunately, I may have made plans for another project after I finish my mittens. And I can't wait till afterwards because it's something for my clinical instructor that I um, could mail to her after I leave, but I think would be more meaningful to give to her on my last day of field work. Editing Caitlin here. Big surprise, I didn't finish it in time. So I'm just gonna have to send it to her for Christmas. But, but I have a nice long road trip to get back to my hometown after my clinical rotation. And I feel it would be really fitting to have worked on this um, all the way through the road trip to get me to my rotation. And I think it'd be um, kind of bring it full circle to finish it on uh, my ride back home. And that's the short and sweet look at what I've been kind of working on. It's only 4.15 in the afternoon, but it is quite dark outside. If you can't tell, I'm relying on two different lamps plus my laptop to keep some decent lighting here because that is just how far north I am. But I've been loving my time here and I um, really want to enjoy the last few weeks that I've got here. But before I go, I want to share a little something that I um, have been working on outside of my knitting. I have really been inspired by a couple of artists that I follow. And naturally, I can't think of their names off the top of my head, unfortunately. But I've got all their links and stuff in the description. So please check them out because they do really beautiful work with a kind of paint called gouache. It's sort of a halfway point in between watercolor and acrylic, if you know anything about art tin painting mediums. And I've really, really found a kind of a happy place with gouache. I've tried painting with watercolors in the past, but I um, really had a hard time with layering because it would all just like blend into itself and I couldn't really put a color on top of another. I, didn't, I couldn't figure that out. Um, but when it came to trying acrylics being thicker and easier to layer, I missed the blendability of watercolors. And so the nice thing about gouache is that it takes um, what was difficult for me about acrylics and watercolors and just kind of throws them out and keeps the best of both worlds, in my opinion. When you mix in a lot of water, gouache sort of acts like watercolor paints. So you can blend and mix and do all just the lovely light work of watercolors. But you can also use them kind of as a thicker acrylic for that layering and deep color that I really like. A few weeks ago, I sort of went to chase the last of the autumn colors um, up to uh, the very, or one of the northernmost points of the state that I'm living in, which really wasn't that far of a road trip because I am pretty far north. And while I was driving, and listening to a podcast about the sound of music, I thought that just the wilderness and the scenery around me was so beautiful. And I made a bunch of mental notes um, so that the next time I broke out my gouache paints, I'd be able to capture what I saw to the best of my um, beginner level abilities. At the risk of looking like a um, non-name brand Katie Green um, of the Green Bean Podcast, which I love and I've really been enjoying this autumn. I recorded a little video of myself painting and um, plan to just end the podcast with that. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you have a really, really lovely time working on the projects that you've got on your needles. Enjoy the painting!